Uh, all right, so let's talk about association classes. Uh, so association classes um, are you know, more or less what we we already saw a little bit of this. We we when we when we talked about um, when we talked about mapping tables, right, where you have a many to many, and we reified it, and we said, okay, we're going to we're going to replace the many to many, and we're going to replace it with a uh, with two one to many's, yes. And and uh, so those those tables th that new class that we implemented right we did it because we knew that there's no way to implement that the many and many in a relational database right we have to have a new table uh, and, and that new table had foreign keys back to the original tables yes uh, now oftentimes that new class or new table oftentimes referred to as just a mapping table saying that hey that record over there on that table is refer is is related to that other record in that other table. Right, and you have two foreign keys pointing to each one of the records. Yes, right. If the if the um, if the role of that table is only to relate two records, it's oftentimes referred to as just a mapping table. Right? It's a mapping table. Right, and uh, you know, oftentimes they, they have a naming convention where you have you know the name of the table underscore and then the other name of the table or something like you know table A, maybe two, and then and then the other name of the table. Yes. You know, A to B or A A A B or something. Uh, but if that so if if that table has other fields in addition to the foreign keys, right? Uh, we say that it's not no longer considered a mapping table. Right? We refer to it as an association table. We say that yes, it's associating two records, but it's describing the, the that relationship. It's saying not only am I saying that. Hey, that student is enrolled in that section. I'm telling you what grade they got, you know, how they like the course, right? Uh, and the and the whole a review about the course and all sorts of things. Yes, okay. So we no longer say that it's a it's a uh, mapping table. We say it's an association table. Okay. Uh, in UML is is it's documented differently, right? A, a mapping uh, uh, class would be just just two references like this that would go you know one to many and one to many. Yes, but if you have a whole bunch of other fields that are describing that uh, you know your mileage credit, uh, you know that you flew in that flight, you know and your frequent flyer miles over there, right? Uh, I want to describe how many base miles and bonus miles and a whole bunch of things. Not only do I am I relating these two these two uh, records, I'm describing it. Okay, so in that in that sense, we 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 say that this is an association class. Right, and we document it with one line, with, a, with a straight line between the two as a many to many, right, and then a dotted line with the association class. Yes, okay, this is a a newer, well, not so new, uh, a newer uh, way to represent it in, in, in the latest UML. Right, it, before it just used to be a many to many, you know, one two many one to many's, but this is a more appropriate way to ca to capture it. Uh, so here's the uh, the uh, implementation of that, where you have the flight, the flight class, right, represented in, as a as a table, right, the flight number, the departure, the 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 flight duration, right, the the with the right data types. We have the frequent flyer mile over there, right, where we, again we have uh, uh, the frequent flyer mile, the first name, last name of the uh, of the frequent flyer mile uh, user, uh, and then the association class ha a table has has the two foreign keys. Uh, where are they? Yeah, here are the two foreign keys. You know, refer one referring to the flight, the other one referring to the frequent flyer mile. Yeah, okay. Um, but it doesn't only have the foreign foreign keys. It also has other fields. You know, like the base miles, the flight number, the flight flyer number, and what whatnot. Okay. It's also enforcing the fact that you know that there, there's a uniqueness between. You know, the flight number and the fly, uh, frequent flyer number, right? So you can't have uh, credit for the same flight twice, right? You only get credit for that particular flight. Um, here's an, another example uh, that uh, you might have uh, a person that uh, you know is a um, a passenger. Uh, actually, no, this was supposed to be a company, a person that works. <laughs> at a company, um, I gotta fix that. So yeah, a person that works at a company, right? And maybe that this is enough. You have a person, right? It keeps track of you know where does this person ever worked, right? It has a um, you know point points to which company that they work on. 
But what if, but what if we wanted to keep track of their history? You know, they, they, they came in, they worked for a couple of years, they left, and then they came back. Right? There was a, kind of like a gap between the, between the, 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 the those, uh, um, between the several years, right? We need to calculate their, their seniority. We need to calculate how long they've been with us, blah, blah, blah. But wait a minute, but if we just captured, you know, start date and end date, right? And then that's not enough, right? We need to be able to be a little bit more nuanced. Uh, so association classes are very good at, at uh, for instance, for capturing those kinds of history or audits, right? Of auditing things that can ha ha happen. You know, with, we're always saying relating the same to record, um, but we're keeping track of a description, right? Of of what was your salary between between this year, what was your salary later in this other year, and what promotions did you get, and all sorts of history that follows an audit trail of that particular uh, association between two entities. Okay, so here's an example of uh, implementing the two uh, the two tables, the company and the employee, uh, and then in between we have this association uh, table that keeps track of uh, the history of this employee and that company. Yes. Yeah. Well, no. Well, you you right. You capture something here, right? That we have a one to many, right? Uh, but we are implementing it with a with a table that has references to both, so we we could implement the many to many, yeah. right? And and that's that was one, that's one of the uh, limitations of going to into a mapping table, that we know we really wanted a one to many, uh, and oftentimes there's no way to enforce the fact that on one side there's only one, and on the other side there's a many, right? The the the, the table the mapping table in between allows us to do a many to many. Right, even though we would like to enforce the fact there's only one on one side. Well, no, if it's if it's part of the person, then uh, you know if they left, right, and then they came back, right, it has a new start date and a new end date, right, right. So and then you need a complete different record that that captures that that history, right. Uh, so, so yeah, so uh, um, um, association class you can refer to full classes. The uh, cool UML, right? So UML relational uh, model, right? Keeping track of uh, of history or or an audit trail, right? Of that employee, you know, leaving and coming back. And he, this is just an example of what these records might look like in an actual uh, table. All right. Hi everyone, Jose here. Uh, please remember to subscribe and like the video. And if you have any questions, please leave a comment down below. Thank you.